Hello and welcome to this intro to Starfab series. I'm Mentavar and this is an introduction to data mining Star Citizen with Starfab. Data mining refers to digging through the raw data to find the absolute values for information in the game. For example, we can figure exactly how fast a ship can accelerate based off its set values or exactly how long a reload time will take or how much power a shield generator uses. As Star Citizen is in active development, the location and format of how these types of data are stored can change over time, so you might have to do some exploring in future versions. Here we're looking at the current live version, which is 3.16.1, build 7.9.3.9.0.6.5. Now, Star Citizen stores all of its data in what is called the Data Pack. This is a custom zip archive the game uses to access all of the assets, configurations, and other things needed to run. Nearly all games use compressed files like this as a balance between download sizes and access speeds, and really isn't designed to keep people out. If you fully extracted the data pack, it would be well over double the size on disk as the pack. The other key system to become familiar with is the data core. In the pack, the data core is a single file called game.dcb. This file is a custom format to efficiently store records about all sorts of things in the game, and it's where you can find ships, weapons, even the star map is defined. For example, let's say we wanted to check out the Crusader Starfighter Ion. Ships are typically in the Entities Spaceships folder. And as you can see, the naming scheme is fairly easy to decipher, being the ship manufacturer followed by the ship name. Here is the Ion. Double clicking the entry will open the data record view on the right. Records in the data core are incredibly modular and built using lots of references to other records. The record view turns this into a more digestible format, breaking down the properties and nested components. You'll notice there are a lot of components, and it can take a while to become familiar with what's most interesting. Let's try to find the firing rate for the main gun on the ion. Ships have loadouts that are defined in the S Entity Component Default Loadout Param section. Nearly every piece of a ship is an entity attached to an item port in the loadout, from the different seats to the missile racks to the paint. There's a lot here, and we know that the main gun on the Ion is a size 7, so let's try searching for S7. Here's the item port for the main weapon, and we can see its entity class name here. We can now search for that in the data core and open the record for the size 7 laser cannon. We could continue looking through the components here, but sometimes it's easier to see it laid out as text, so we'll try viewing the record as JSON. This is the same information in the record view, but in the editor. You could comb through this to become familiar with all the data involved in a component, and there is a lot, but I already know what I'm looking for, so we'll search for fire actions. Nested in the configurations for the fire actions, we can see the weapon sequence delay is 110, and that's in RPM, or rate per minute, meaning the S7 laser cannon will fire 110 times per minute. Let's take it a step further and see how much damage we'll do with each shot. For that, we need to search for the ammo parameters, which will give us the record ID for the ammo this weapon uses, and this is an important point. Data records have a name and a path, but these are not guaranteed to be unique. The only reliably unique reference to a record is the GUID. We can search for the ammo ID in the data core, and we found the S7 ammo, and we'll go ahead and search for damage, and we can see it under the projectile params. If we wanted to share this information, you can right-click on the section and choose Copy as JSON, which we can then paste into other applications. You can also right click on the record and extract the entire record to disk. For something different, let's say I wanted to look at the materials for the ion. Back in its record, I can look for the ship's geometry. Here nested in the geometry resource params, we can see the path to the primary model for the ion. Most reference paths will not include the data at the beginning of the path name, so if we go over to the pack, we can navigate to Data, Objects, Spaceships, Crews, Starfighter.
model files, and Star Citizen are custom formats that we'll dive into in another video, but you can browse them to some extent, just like the data core records. Here we can see the material name, which points us to the CURS starfighter.mtl in the same folder. Now I happen to know that these files are in the CryXMLB format, which is a legacy CryEngine format not too dissimilar to the data core. Starfab understands these files and will automatically convert them to be human readable format and then open in the editor tab. In this case, it converted the file to XML. My editor might look different than yours by default, but you can modify your editor settings in the settings dialog at the top as well as the format to convert CryXMLB to. I want to find the decals that are all over the hull of the ship, so we'll search for ext underscore decal and find the path to the textures that are used. You'll notice the path ends in .tif, but nearly all textures are actually in a custom DDS format. Here's our CRS decal 01 diff, and you'll notice that there are eight different files. This is because Star Citizen breaks textures into different levels of detail, so not all of the textures have to be loaded directly in the game at once. Starfab makes working with these easy as we can double click on any component part of the split DDS texture, and it'll automatically recombine them and convert them to a format that is easier to use. We can save this image by right clicking on the image viewer. If we wanted to extract all of these decals, we can right click on the folder in the pack list and choose Extract 2. This extraction dialog gives you options in how the data is extracted. By default, Starfab will automatically convert textures and models as they're being extracted from the pack, and you can choose which format they're converted to. If we had chosen Save 2 instead of Extract 2, the same process would have happened, but the files would have been stored directly in the chosen folder without recreating the directory structure. So there's a brief introduction to what it's like exploring the data inside of Star Citizen, both in the data core and in the pack. The game is constantly changing to include how and where the information is stored, and the SE modding wiki and Discord are good places to go if you're looking how to find a specific piece of information. Good luck, and see you in the verse.